Welcome to Thursday Night Lights on Fox 12 Oregon, presented by Pacific Office Automation. Hard to tell what day it is anymore. Summer has gone, daylight dwindling, time to turn on the TV. This first day of fall, also our fourth week of Thursday Night Lights. A pair of 6-8 unbeatens colliding along Shoals Ferry, 3-0 Newburgh, 3-0 Mountainside. The Mavericks riding high after last week's 24-7 victory at Lake Oswego. Third quarter, we go 28-14 Mavs. Jared Lang, one of those kids who has grown with the program for John Mannion, the senior with an 18-yard scamper for score. Later third now, Mountainside coming. Camera side, this is the kind of side we love to see. The mighty Quinn O'Connor, another senior delivery. 42-14 for the horsepower. No quit though in Newburgh, fourth quarter. Sometimes you gotta go the long way. Isaac Heveron, 22, coming right at you. The junior pulls the Tigers a little bit closer, 42-21. We close on this door. More Mavs on the ground. Sam Villadol getting it done. He's a freshman in the scorebook now. 49-28. And for the first time in their short school history, the Mavericks are 4-0. They'll shoot for five next week in Rock Creek to begin Metro League play at Westview. Newburgh heads the Highway 99 rivalry with McMinnville. Pacific Conference competition. We shall be in both locations. And one last non-league challenge for number five Jesuit, number eight Sherwood, both entering Bowman homecoming night. Two and one. The Crusaders coming off that loss to West Lynn. The Wood ripped one on the road at Lake Ridge. The opening quarter saw nothing on the boards. We go to second here. That's senior Noah Staley in front of the franchise. That offensive line. You know they're opening holes for him. 41 yards in for six. And their junior quarterback boy, Jacob Hutchinson, has seen a lot during his time. Here he finds another junior, Jace Burton. His dad, Nigel, smiling surely. 27 yard score. It's 14 0 after a successful two. Then more from number 22. Staley, deuces, peace out. Nabs another score. Jesuit wins the day as it ends in a running clock. 42 0. Aloha now awaits them at home. Sherwood will next roll to Century. And follow your nose along Cornell. Sunset high and Lake Ridge. And another sign that nature is healing. We finally saw the return of the Apollo Corn Dogs. Party like it's 2019 and before. The golden goodness by parent volunteers benefits that class of 2023 grad party. I'm telling you right now, it smelled good. I left there. I smelled like deep fried goodness. Good stuff for you. You know what pairs well, though, with a dog? Chili. Pacer senior, Chili Stevens Jr. dips in for six. Lake Ridge out in front to open up the picnic party. Military appreciation night in the Purple Pit. Drew Knees salutes this to Kyle Zhu. A gain of 39. Sunset would soon be in the red zone, but it wasn't easy. That's Lake Ridge beast off the edge. Tristan Davis, he's ticketed for Tucson, a commitment to Arizona. He's six foot seven, 250. That's number 99. This is number 99. On the other side, too, Maxwell Odom, lacrosse kid can catch, levels a score. Lake Ridge, though, a load. Ryan Oliver, Joey Olson, almost too much when they're paired together. That's senior to senior. Fight on. Olson just committed to USC. Got a C to believe. Paces prevail, 42-14. Sunset now remains home with Beaverton. Lake Ridge opens up three Rivers League play with Twalton. That'll be our big game next Thursday. Historic Kiggins Bowl in Vancouver. Major offseason facelift. Bench seating, a new roof, extra seats, of course, and so badly needed accommodation in the community field originally built in the late 1930s. Ridgefield, Hudson's Bay, and 2A Greater St. Helens League play. 14 6 sputters in the second. Two minutes left in the half. Here come the Eags. Dean Castillo, Mateo Verona over the middle. Mateo looking to get to that nest. He'll be down at the 18. That would set up a field goal try, but Wyatt Bartroff would deny. Wyatt blocks that kick. And do the Bartman. Picks up, runs down the sidelines, an 87-yard score, 20 to 6 for the blue and orange potatoes. Final ticks of half, though. Hudson Bay does some trading. Castillo throwing left. Akil Bowman, he's merely a freshman. What a catch for the kid in front of that new field house. 22 yards, 20 to 13 at the break. Fourth quarter now, Ridgefield up 32 to 20. Eagles soaring the rally with the claws of a linebacker. Brody Masterson, the pick in the return, the 11. Two snaps later, bagging up for the spuds. Logan de Beaumont, Carter Fervor. Good night. 53-27 in the end. They'll both return to Friday games next week. Ridgefield host Washugal Bay will play at Mark Morris. That's a fast four and another dozen games on the docket for us tomorrow. And then we'll count down the best of what we just saw during the Sunday 10 o'clock news with the six picks plays of the week. And while we love to be everywhere, it's not a perfect world.
you happen to capture any highlights from the game, we'd love to see them and get them on the show. Reference that QR code on your screen for an easy upload. Now, back on Monday, Estacada High School's JV team played at home with Camus, and a special moment unfolded on the Rangers' new turf. Fox 12 Paulina Aguilar has the tail of the tape. Run, Ryan, run. Ryan's parents describe him as a social butterfly, that no matter what you're doing, he just wants to be a part of it. And now Ryan is part of the Estacada JV football team. I mean, it was a moment for the community just as much as it was for Ryan. Ryan Hunt is a freshman at Estacada High, and all he wants to do is play football. <laughs> On Monday in a game against Camus, Ryan got the opportunity and scored a 70-yard touchdown. For me, it was amazing. I don't think there was a dry eye in the stands. It was pretty great, actually. Well, someone did almost try to tackle me, and I went through the end zone. When Ryan was born with Down syndrome, his parents say they had their concerns at first. When your kid is born different than the other kids, when he had a diagnosis of Down syndrome, we didn't know what to expect, what his life would be like, and there was a lot of fear and worry with that. But now he's just another ranger. Ryan gets to be just as much a part of the team as anyone else, taking part in drills like tackling and catching with a little help from his mentor. I kind of do like modified warm-ups for him because he can't do them all. He does lots of things with me like push-ups and raving, tapping on helmets. And now Ryan has 60 new brothers. I don't have to step in a lot of the time because the team will, uh, will pull him to the side and show him what to do and then there's not a guy on that field that doesn't have Ryan in their radar and making sure Ryan's good to go. Uh, they're quick when Ryan's confused on something to help him out. But the road to get here wasn't easy. In 2019, Ryan was in the hospital and on a ventilator for a month, unsure if he would ever leave. There weren't any answers. You know, they, they couldn't really give us many explanations. It was just, you know, he's, he just doesn't seem to be getting better was really all I ever heard. To see him now, fully engaged in high school, fully present, being part of a team. It's amazing. I can't even, I can't even put it into words. And his mom says he's the most popular guy at school. Everywhere he goes, he's high-fiving somebody and he's just bringing that enthusiasm for life to the school. One of the things that I have learned over the years is not to put limitations on him. That kid surprises me all the time. Ryan may be different, but he's got dreams just like everyone else. If you had to have one dream in the whole wide world, what would you dream? Being a dad with babies, getting married. Ryan's mom says he lives life to the fullest and that he's got a bright future ahead of him. But for now, he looks forward to playing football for the next four years. Reporting in Estacada, Pauline Aguilar, Fox 12, Oregon. Story, thank you, Paulina. Ryan is following the footsteps of his big brother Daniel and Estacada High alum who also play football. An email a video of Ryan scoring hit our inbox on Tuesday morning. We'd love to hear of those great, good sports and good sportsmanship stories to share right here on Fox 12. Phil Sidham, your kid who deserves some time in the spotlight. And our high school spotlight on tap for Friday will be with a history maker at Glencoe High. Phoebe Retzloff just keeps going and going. The senior goalie for the Crimson Tide girls also as a place kicker for the football team. The jewelry making dual sports star booted five extra points in her varsity debut for Duck alum Ian Reynoso, the head coach at Glencoe, the first girl to ever score at GHS. We'll get her herstory and roll with the tide in Hillsboro Friday night on FNL at 1030. Also Friday, our big game crew will be live in Cougar Country as Canby hosts Ben for a non-league top 10 matchup in 5A. We'll feature the Cougs' Parker Ackerman. The senior quarterback was called into duty a week ago and it was long overdue. It was last October when Parker took a helmet to the thigh, a benign bone tumor was then found, three surgeries, a pick line for a bone infection, and a wound back, and look at Park go now. A leg amputated, maybe I could have died. Uh, and that's, it's crazy to think about that that could have been a reality. Uh, just knowing, like I said, God has a plan for everything. If anyone's struggling with anything, he'll get you through it. 
Yeah, Ackerman also wears the number four with pride as they continue to honor the late A.J. Schlatter in Canby. The full story coming up on Friday Night Lights. We'll be live in Canby for Fox 12 FNL, as well as Grant and Jefferson. The big, of course, neighborhood bragging rights. Stops at Kelso at Camas, South Albany, Silverton, Barlow, Clackamas. So many more on our radar for week four of Friday Night Lights. You can watch it live on TV or the Fox 12 app. Always so good, guys. Love to see those stories telling us. We, we don't know about it until somebody yeah. tells us about yep. it. So please continue writing in, calling us up and say, come check these guys out, these girls out. We'd love to come out there and share those stories with you. Love the story about Ryan. Uh, yeah, go Ryan, Ryan and go. Great Big man on campus yeah. before Monday and certainly now tomorrow morning as well. Yeah. What a superstar. Yeah. Good stuff, Crap. Thanks so much.